ました。There you go. There What are you crawling? What are you crawling for? Turner. Hi. Say hi, Papa. <laughs> it's hard to go on the grass. Put it on the driveway over here. Go up, up, go up. Turner. <laughs> My goodness. Scares me out of me. Turner kicked the ball. 
gonna be a soccer player. See how he keeps it between his feet? All control. Yeah, I think they're, uh, What do you see, Turner? What do you see, huh? What you looking at? Watch out. You having fun? Say hi. Huh? Is that Papa pulling you? Bye. I get you. I get you. Come on. That's a big boy. Hi, Annie. Whoa. Where are you going? Turner? Where are you going? Hi, Turner. Kick the ball for mommy. Can you kick the ball? Hi, Turner. Kick the ball for mommy. Can you kick the ball? Yeah, go get the ball for me. Go, 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 go. Kick, yay! Turner, what does the doggy say? Yeah. Kick the ball. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, honey. Ah. Turner. <clears throat> Turner. Merry Christmas, little man. How are you? Keep ripping. 
Keep ripping. <laughs> Keep ripping. Here. We got four cameras here, right? <laughs> this is better than. your hair because <laughs> <laughs> these are pretty hung up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But our funniest pictures are our ones where we're <laughs> all goofy. Yeah, pretty. Oh, these are very pretty, huh? Like them? Yeah, I like them a lot. Oh, yeah. Here's another one for you, Turner. Oh. All right. There, Turner. Turner. I hate the day. Turner. Let's see what mother's got. This one's for you. Thank you. It's for you. <laughs> right, do you we'll help you? Will Turner. you wear those? Oh, we're birds. Here. There. Look at daddy. Look up, honey. Look at daddy. <laughs> yeah. Show grandpa the front of it. There. Oh, I bet she didn't do that. Soft ride. <laughs> no, That's cool. Like, yeah. But, uh, we're staying with Lily. So I imagine the people over. Yeah. yeah they, they have them. They're yeah. all for Turner. Trishy! 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 The Duke. I like this. Is this, is this the Duke. right, guys? Of course. Like, <laughs> you just tell me when you're making that lobster bisque. Lobster bisque here. Turner. Hey, here's Lindley's guitar. Oh. What do you think of that? Yeah, some weird stuff. Well, he slides That's too. Neat. He slides. Don't play catch with daddy? That's neat. I had thought about art Hi, while you were up at school. Uh -huh. yeah. Go play catch with daddy? Yeah. Yay. That would have probably been better than the popcorn. Popcorn that lasts. Oh, 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 o
pros like to use a pitching wedge or a nine iron where they don't have to make such a hard swinging. Hi guys. Yeah, you know where they oh, are. Where do you want to go in first? What is that? It's keyboard. Keyboard. Oh, keyboard. Okay. Oh, sorry. We were just talking about that. We were just talking about that. Someone in Texas loves me. Yeah. Your own baby gray. Yeah, and enjoy this gift. That's good stuff. There's a keyboard. It's John. Sorry. Right on, yeah. yeah. No, he's sitting down. All keyboard is stand. <laughs> okay, Trip, where's yours? Right here. You gonna open it? Do you know what it is? No. You didn't look through that paper? No. <laughs> <laughs>
button is it we're playing yep hello, hello. <laughs> you're fine i don't know why yeah. i don't know why i'll be darn it sure is are you still playing you didn't break it out you're wrong <laughs> <laughs> Not that we're great mechanics. You know, we do have good mechanics, but that if I had if I had hired five monkeys off the street, we would get that sort of stuff because where we're at, it's in a high rent area. Where are you? We're right in the middle of what's called Old Town Passing. It's kinda of like Westwood right now. And they just they're engineering engineering company. The world's largest engineer. And this is Phil. They're the three blocks north of us and they hire they have like sleep. you know, ten thousand employees. I mean it's huge. And they use and your, the road. And the, we're the only repair shop near them. Hmm. So, you know, it's just that area. Yeah, and, and year, that also includes saying, like well, the Rose, at any Rose Bowl game. Like anything at the Rose Bowl. The concert will definitely be telling. Yeah, but the concert will be telling. Yeah, but the concert will be telling. That's what I'm saying. And we're going to build a whole new platform for this. And they built a whole new one. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to keep on the tow truck. Yeah, that's it. 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 So basically you have all this. See, the problem is the gem uncle. Don't get this on tape. Hi, Turner. Triple A's. I've got Hi, sweetie. And it's not that good. 
You can get if you have like Allstate or something like that. It's a much better service. No, I don't have Allstate. Allstate's better. A lot of those other clubs. Well, all I've ever had to have do. Well, the guy yeah. did. He did do Sounds something for me the last time I was in the rain, and somehow another. Like Are you going to have a gram? Yeah, uh, Graham's going to have a picture. What is this trip? Your diary? Oh, we need to go get her. And where did you get this? Uh, oh, okay. You going to serenade us, Turner? Wait. I got to get this. Can I have a drink? Can I get it? Yeah. 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 Like Play it again, Sam. Just talk to his mom. Just like his mom, a drinker. I'm not sure that's my Maybe a four wood, Bobby. He's got a three wood. He'll probably be taking this right of center. He'll really have to catch it solid if he wants to carry that left hand bunker. And that's the direction he's trying to go. It's left side, and it's going to be in the bunker, I think, Gary. What the players are trying to do now, Bobby, is with the pin on the left hand side, just on the green, they're trying to air it out to the right hand portion of this fairway so they have a pretty good angle at that pin. But you know, it's hard to get yourself to aim over there. You got a lot of those bushes sitting around over there. And uh, it's, it kind of an, is an unnatural way to play the hole. You want to aim more at the green, and it's hard to get the, the players to aim far enough right. Or you can lay it up in front of the bunker. You have 230 yards to lay it up, and that's probably a two or three iron for most of these guys. Baker Finch, I would suggest, or think, would hit, take a forward and hit it short of the bunker. It's getting to the point right now where he is dictating the policy of the other guys. The other guys now are going to start taking the chances. They're going to have to start trying to fit in these little fairways. He's going to go about his business. If he can make one more birdie, they're in serious, serious trouble. That's right. You know, he takes this forward, and he's got six, seven iron second shot left to the green. He'll probably have 15, 20 feet and might have make, make a birdie. 
This one's going to be right yeah. of center. It's going to be too far right. But... Right, then short stuff. It's in the short stuff. Mm -hmm. Too far right. Get in my hand from the next one. Perfect. Yeah, it's, it's pretty short though. That's going to be another two clubs for a second shot. So he'll be left probably with a five iron instead of a, of a uh, seven iron. There goes a layup, huh? Yeah, you can you can count on this drive being long. Oh, exactly like yesterday. He's right in the middle of that 22 yard wide fairway again. <laughs> that bunker that he just flew it over right there to the front of the bunker that's from the tee side is 283 yards away so again we're looking at a 300 yard oh. carry <laughs> but you know Gary now he's going to have a tough little second shot with not much green similar to the second shot he had at number 11 yesterday I don't know if he can spin it enough to keep it by the hole but here woozy has got a driver also he's dictating the policy and these guys have got to try to fire at it now he's leaning left like it's going right it's going right heading at the bunker I don't know if it's going to reach the bunker though Perfect. Play pretty good in that. That's a good position for Woozy. Ian Baker Finch has been the leader from four under to seven under, and Woosnam remains two back. I flew around the world in record time, 57 hours, 25 minutes, and 42 seconds. And that's not nearly fast enough to keep up with all my businesses. Lanier's fax is 10 seconds to the West Coast, 20 to the Far East, all on bond paper. And I can send it to all my businesses with one button, leaving me time to set new world records. Call Lanier, 1-800-241-1706. We're interested in performance, not in the looks. When somebody puts down that dull finished club and then has a beautiful shot. I think it's surprising how pretty that club begins to look to them. If our product is successful, in other words, it performs, then it becomes beautiful. Things are done for a reason. People are looking for function, and function works. Indianapolis, Daytona, Talladega, Pomona, Baja. Why do we go to such distant places to put craftsman tools to the test? If you're going to guarantee a tool forever, it's got to take the torture even guys like you dish out. 1,600 craftsman hand tools, made in America, guaranteed forever, only at Sears. Besides, this kind of testing is fun. Colonel Richelieu, where are you? We're at Waterloo, and no, things are not okie-dokie here, except for my okie fan. I can hear you so well. I can almost see you. Do you have the army with you? Bring them here, please. Soon. Buy yourself some time. Okie cellular phones. Have you ever had one of those days? Another way to negotiate the lagoons here at Kauai Lagoons on the mahogany launches that were made in Europe, and are they ever splendid looking? Well, we've come to the 14th green, and really what it is is a, a moment to collect ourselves, because when you get to 15 and the ocean, we'll see, and then 16, the downhill ride, the little par three, and then the finishing hole at 18, so the chance now to reassess everything, and how do you see it? Well, uh... Ian Baker Finch is the Ralph Cranman now. He's driving the bus. The other guys are in the back waiting to get let off. So we're going to find out. He's going to dictate the policy by how he hits the ball in the green every hole. And, and just the business of playing the game, the other guy's got to take the chances. Bobby? He's got a good-looking shot right at the flag to a tough pin. 172-yard six iron. Really a good shot from there. That was really a demanding shot. You miss the green left, it goes down into that deep bunker, and you have a tough bunker shot. You miss it right, it comes back down the slope, and you have a difficult putt. That was really a critical iron shot, in my opinion. Payne Stewart's going to be next to play. As you remember, he drove it in the left bunker, hit three wood off the tee, has a 122-yard shot out of the bunker, and only five yards of green to work with. Bobby, don't you think that right now that uh, Baker Finch can... I, I would lay back and make sure I hit the ball on the green first, and if his iron play is good, he can just keep peppering the flag stick like this and really put a lot of pressure on these guys, knowing he can't drive it up with them. That's exactly right, Gary. You know, I can remember times that Gary Player, one time uh, at the World Series of Golf, hit three-wood on every hole. 
just because he was playing with some long hitters and didn't want them to outdrive him all the time. And he beat him. Pitching wedge here for Payne and really has caught the ball well. That was a tough shot. Got nice trajectory, good looking shot. That's so hard, man, to control the distance oh. when you're in a fairway bunker. That's that's the main thing. You can, they can all hit it pretty straight, but boy, you got to catch that ball just perfect. And you realize there's a hundred thousand dollar difference between second place and fourth, Come on, guys. and a hundred and fifty thousand dollar difference from second and first. And Van Ian Woosnam's now getting ready to hit his second shot, 103 yards, sand wedge. Remember, he hit driver off this tee. Perfect angle for him. Nice full swing. Bobby's right at it. I don't know if it's long enough. Get oh, it's oh, perfect, yes. Bobby. Oh, yes. He's got about two feet. Great shot there. So that he was has a, a good chance number. to recoup after the bogey at 13. He can get his birdie at 14 and get back to six under and continue to try to apply the pressure on Ian Baker Finch. John Daly only has 68 yards to the flag. Just a little half L wedge. Tough little shot, too. Is it too long, Gary? Not bad. Not mm. bad at all. About eight feet, ten feet by the hole. As we're seeing a pretty good change right here, we've got a par five coming up then that that Ian Woosnam can reach in two, I believe, today. And uh, uh, it's going to get real tight here before this thing's over with. The $400,000 are going to be a a lot less oxygen out there. And to put it in perspective, as you can see, Baker Finch at seven under, Woosnam at five under, Stewart at three under, and Daly at one under par, with that big par five coming up, which is 529 yards, the 15th hole. We also have a, a downhill ride at 16. We have a short 17th par three with water in front of it, and then we have the home hole, the 18th, with water all the way down the right side. So. This is a long way from being over. And it's going to be in a position now if if we can unfold the scenario here if the chances are that Baker Finch is going to two putt and Ian's going to make his. So now it's a it's a one shot hole. And now it's just you're always looking over your shoulder Two shot. It's kind of like OK I've got to mess up and the other guy has got to do good. But now it's just like uh oh he can do good and timing making a birdie really changes the course of everything too. We've got some fun holes coming in. Oh yeah. Some decisions. Uh, the decision on 16. I don't think either Ian Woosnam or obviously Ian Baker Finch are going to try to go for the green. But a guy like John Daly, Payne Stewart's four shots back. Payne might say, well, if I can run it down there and make a one, all of a sudden I'm back in the game, yeah. which, which he could. So it'll be interesting. Ian Baker Finch, who is an innocent bystander in an Australian restaurant and a man in his cups hit him in the eye and he suffered nerve damage which is why he wears glasses now of all things to happen to such a gentle man rough bars there in Australia it's going 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 and it's gonna stick again and he's just kind of been putting like that just kind of been hanging around the hole but no authority on it right now so he's still at seven under that's a remarkable role remember now he began the day birdie 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 and has not come up with another one since the third hole but he's held on to his lead no bogeys that's the key if you're not making any birdies boy you best not make any bogeys well Woosna made a bogey on 13 and he's trying to make up for that here and get to within one but first Payne Stewart and the uh, other part of that story was uh, the gentleman's young lady was making advances at uh, Mr. Baker Finch, and that's when it all started. Right. So, trying to mind his own business. He has those kind of looks. Payne Stewart now in a real hurry up to get something going. Four shots back. Not many holes left. quite get on a roll right now. Vinny's just kind of staggering. He's playing well, but just can't get two or three in a row to get, get him going. He had a bogey at two, then he picked up a birdie at five and a birdie at six, and we thought, oops, he's off to the races, but he hasn't really been heard from since, and here's John Daly. <laughs> think he made it or think he missed it, Ben? <laughs> Well, oh, there it is. There it is. So he's going to stay at one under par. 
then you know the cup placement on this hole is a very difficult one because there's a little subtle ridge right where the cup is placed and the cup is right at the very crest of that subtle ridge so it's the ball's going uphill to the cup and then it goes downhill away from it nothing fancy here though is there bobby no this is uh oh this is more than a foot and a half and straight in i think okay. he's going to do this one let's let's watch it again vin he he likes to hit up on these putts and you'll see a lot of distance between the putter blade and the grass Yep, beautiful. So he is back to six under, which means he is one back of the leader, Ian Baker Finch. So the leaderboard again, Finch, Baker Finch is at seven under, losing him at six, Stewart at three, Daly at one. And remember, we're coming to a big par five, 529 yards, and now the heat will be to some degree on Baker Finch. It is called the Lion. And the Lion right now, is definitely Ian Woosnam. He has got the length to get there in two. It's 529 yards. Uh, big hole right here because Baker Finch is going to step to this tee knowing that he probably can't get there and he's going to have to pitch the ball on and one putt it to get a birdie knowing that Ian's probably going to get blasted on in two here. And this is just a gorgeous hole. It swings to the left and look at this scene. It just goes right out in the Pacific Ocean right there. Beautiful green sets left to right, about 45, 47 steps wide, and, and uh, the pin today is in the back left. And the wind, you can see, is a little downwind, which could help Ian Baker Finch. He might be able to, to whack a couple of them and get on. One thing about uh, Ian Woosnam, since he's trying to catch up, when he won at Augusta, he played the par fives in 10 under. Four times he played the par three 12th, and he was one under. So he has both the length and the power and he also has the good short game and he proved that at Augusta it'll be interesting now when he applies to apply it here yeah, we've, we've gotten down to a two-man race it's mm -hmm. uh, these two guys going at it uh, two great players uh, you got you got the best putter probably in the world today as we've been reiterating uh, with Ian Baker Finch and you, you got the best player in the world in my opinion and the, in the rankings um, in Ian Woosnam and it's gonna come down to them for four hundred thousand dollars first prize let's watch okay You can see our colleague out there, but he's going to lose about 50 pounds this week. He is all over. He's on skates just about. Bobby, Bobby Clampett. Well, I, I won't need to go on a diet next week, Gary. That's for sure. Now, Bobby, give me, give me the win. Is it with him? Is it against him? It's almost still. Be okay. still. Be still. That's that. We haven't seen that plan out there. Well, it's right here, right around the tee. I don't know if you can get a shot. There it is, it. right there to the left. See that, that scrub stuff, that dark green? It's called be still. Yellow, yellow leaves on it, don't eat it. So or you'll be still. It's a plant to have on a golf course. Yes. <laughs> just you really get going bad, just jump in there with your mouth open. Be still, please. Bobby, in your opinion, can Ian Becker Finch get here in two with no win? He can get there, but he'll only be able to get to the very front right portion of the green, which will leave him somewhat 80 feet from the hole. So really, he. Two very good shots for Ian will we'll leave him in a, even a tough birdie oh, position. Yeah. This is a big, oh. big drive right oh. here for him. How'd he hit it? Perfect. Left center of the fairway. Ideal. He had to put the pressure on Ian Baker Finch to say, there it is. I can get there in two. Now, it's your game. You know, talking about a battle, there's also a battle between Payne Stewart and John Daly because $50,000 difference between third and fourth, that's not exactly lunch money. And you don't want to come in last. Mm. And a good drive for Payne, fading a little bit right center of the fairway. Should not be into the bunker, though. Good position. Now Payne will be in that same situation that I was predicting for Baker Finch if he hits a good drive where he won't be able to go at the flag but can get the ball in the front right portion of the green. I think Baker Finch has really been hitting the ball well today, don't you, Gary? Yes, beautiful. Great balance today. Just sticking right into the finish. That one, you could really see him try to lean on one, and he got out of his entire rhythm. And you yeah. can, right there, Bobby, is the first time we've seen a drive influence another player. Well, he knows that he has to absolutely crush one to get home here in two, and why not? He got a wide, wide enough area, no, uh, no out of bounds or anything really to speak of, so let her go. Oh! How about this guy letting it go? <laughs> this one is 
really long. This one's going to fly wisdom by 20 yards, 30, 40. Oh, that is so, so long. It's hammer time. Well, it's your 529-yard hole. How far would you guess that drive is? I would say, Vin, it's probably 320 yards. We will pause if we keep in mind a 310-yard drive by John Daly and also the fact that Baker Finch is being threatened. Tonight on TBS, a nuclear sub and her crew are down. Can we get them out? Why are they here? They don't believe me! It's going over the edge. Charlton Heston, Gray Lady Down, 10 Eastern tonight on TBS. I just did something kind of weird. I put a leading solid antiperspirant here on my left arm, and now it's a white flaky mess. Then, on my other arm, I put non-whitening arid solid. See? No mess. That's because only arid has this non-whitening cleaner formula, so you get solid protection against wetness and odor without the white mess. And that means you can get a little closer. Fight wetness and odor with non-whitening arid, the only leading solid protection without the white mess. I always carry my Lanier pocket protege so I can record my ideas anywhere. Because I get some of my best ideas in showers. Call 1-800-241-1706. Two foursomes can use Lanier's new digital dictation system so you can save your company over $15,000 a year in executive time. That's a lot of golf balls. But it doesn't cost a lot of golf balls. Your dentist told you about plaque. You knew what it could lead to. But you didn't listen. You need the new Braun Oral-B plaque remover. The unique cup-shaped brush cleans deep between each tooth and below the gum line. Just like your dentist wants you to. That shell should hold now, Doc. The Braun Oral-B plaque remover. Only your dentist does it better. As we look out at this gorgeous hillside going down into the ocean, nearby to Kalapaka Bay. But the story right now is the 15th hole, because among other things, this looks like it could be the golden opportunity for Ian Woosnam to catch Baker Finch. Whether he's up to it or not remains to be seen, but this now becomes a showdown hole. And Ian Baker Finch is well aware of it. The first thing, I guess, Bobby, if we could, is how far did John Daly hit his ball, let's say, past Ian Woosnam, who crushed his? Oh, it's about 26, 28 yards. It's, uh, it was phenomenal. And you can even see the, where the ball pitched into the fairway. The ball only rolled about five or six yards. <laughs> and, but if you look back here where Baker Finch is, now, Baker Finch was really trying to hit it hard there. He knew that he needed to, to hit two very solid shots to get home here in two, and so was Stewart. But Daly is about 58 yards past both uh, past uh, Baker Finch. Baker Finch is about ready to hit. He's got 270 yards to the pin, 253 to the front right edge. He's got a three-wood out. If he catches it real solid, he could put it on the very, very front right edge, but that's, that's the best he can do. Another hard swing. And it's going a little further right than he would like. Better than yesterday. That's fine. It's going to feed right. right down there. A nice position. Beautiful yeah. position. It's long enough so he won't have to come back over that bunker like he did yesterday. Right. So we have a lot of green to work with. Now, Stewart's got a hook lie, which is good for this shot, the pin being on the left side of the green. And he's got 262 yards. So Payne can go ahead and uh, hit three wood and knock it on the right middle of the green from there. And boy, right now, Bobby, you're it's preferred lies and what you try to find right now is a little tuft of grass that's been raised so you can he found one too he wants his driver he's got it he's got it way up there sitting up there a lot of air underneath it he was also trying to get the maximum relief he could off that side hill so now he's got a little flatter lie every one of these guys has just got great grips Swing. Oh, he caught it solid, oh, too. Really good shot, right in the very right side of the green. Nice Beautiful. Shot. That's just where he had to hit the ball. Interesting play here for Woozy. He's got 237 to the hole. My guess is a one iron. And I think he'll take it right at the pin. What do you think, Gary? No question. You know he's got a good lie. 
pretty level lie, but like I said yesterday, this green's elevated. You cannot run the ball up. You have to hit a high shot, and it's a one iron. Oh, right. Caught it be real right, solid and looking really good. Wobbly as Caddy loves it. Oh, just right at the flag stick. What a gorgeous golf shot. Boy, can he hit those long irons, especially that one iron well. Ooh. Sure was. What's, uh, <laughs> I don't want to want to ask. It looks like about a five iron. He's got 210, and it is a five iron. I don't think it's enough, though. Lost one camera there, and we got a lot of oh, divot. He, he cut it real solid, though. I think it is going to get there. Short of the pin, but on the green, I think. No, Bobby no. just got on the top edge of that bunker and came up a little short. He should with a five iron in the second shot. So Baker Finch, the leader, is short right of the green. Ian Woosnam is on the green. He'll be putting for Eagle, and the hunt is really on. PGA Grand Slam of Golf is brought to you by Radio Shack, the technology store, America's leader in consumer electronics, and by Tommy Armour Golf. More and more players are choosing the 845S irons by Tommy Armour. At Radio Shack this Christmas, you'll find hundreds of great gift ideas. Computers for home or business, stereo systems, speakers, CD players. Even Santa would have to admire our selection of radios, calculators, and electronic clocks. Nearly 60 telephones and over 80 cassette players, Memorex VCRs and camcorders. And don't forget our top-rated batteries. You'll find it all at Radio Shack, America's technology store. I got them right out of the wrapper, and I tried them in Fort Lauderdale two years ago, and I, and at the time I wasn't playing very well, and, and I put them in the bag Wednesday night before the first round, and the first round of the golf tournament I shot 67, I and remember I never that. looked back. Sharp brings you the world of big events, the big bowl games, concerts, the championship games, the playoffs, title fights, hit movies, big events, big on Sharp Vision, the liquid crystal projection system with the eight-foot picture that makes you feel like you're there. Now, see Terminator 2 on Sharp Vision. See a demonstration and you could win a trip to a Hollywood premiere and the Terminator's jacket. Buy Sharp Vision and get a $500 rebate. Sharp Vision. For information, call 1-800-B-SHARP. $65 a night, Thursday through Sunday. Isn't it time? For reservations, call 1-800-HILTONS. Now bounce back with a Kauai Hilton and thrifty rent-a-car. Packages are only $99 a day and include a continental breakfast and a mid-sized car with unlimited miles. For reservations, call 1-800-HILTON. You don't see a line going up that way? No. No? Right See, it's still going that way. Yeah. Right well, here. This looks like a line right here. Bobby, watch the discussion. Well, Vin, he's trying to decide whether the ball's in the fairway or not. And with the rains that they had this morning, they weren't able to mow this portion of the fairway. And it's so difficult to tell what's rough and what's fairway. And, of course, if the ball's in the fairway, then he gets to place the ball and get a better lie. If the ball's in the rough, he has to play it as is. And even if, he, if the ball is in the rough, which I think they've decided it is, it's a borderline casual water call. Ian Baker Finch now has to be thinking about getting it very close because you know that Woosnam will be putting for Eagle and that one shot lead is suddenly very shaky. He's going to show Ian Woosnam right now if he's got what it takes for the 400 grand mm -hmm. because he's, he's got him back against the wall, so to speak. Uh, he's got to come up with a good shot off a tough lie, it looks like here. And it, the thing I don't like about these shots is. Look where that pin is. That pin is a long way away. So you've got a lot of green to roll it around, and there's there's not there's not a lot you can really get in and really delve on here. It's just kind of wide open and a big green. 
Bobby, what kind of a club will he use for this shot? Well, Vin, he's got a sand wedge. There's a little tier that's between he and the hole. And what he's going to do is he's going to take a sand wedge and try to land it on top of the tier. And he still has 40 feet of green to work with from on top of the tier to the hole. And uh, so the sand wedge will put him up on top and he'll run it down to the hole. That's got to get up. Yeah, I was just going to say, wouldn't you run into the fear of having a checkup on you too short? Well, that's one of those uh, questionable calls as to really what the right play is. You take an eight iron and land it on the front of the green, then you got so much run on the ball that it's difficult to judge all that run. But then again, uh, you take the sand wedge and you, your trajectory will vary so much, and his got up a little higher than he wanted. Daly from short of the green, good shot. Almost made it. Four footer coming back for birdie for Jerry. Bobby, how how short was he from the front of the green with that uh, five iron he hit? He's about seven yards short of the front of the green, which was about 24 yards short of the pin. So which is a bunch with the five iron. It really is. You know, he just hasn't adjusted well to these uh, clubs that have been adjusted for him. You know, he had them set up a little bit stronger, and and they weakened them for him. And he's just. Uh, not quite uh, able to make the adjustment this week. Bobby, doesn't it seem strange that a man would have his clubs adjusted before playing for a $400,000 first prize? Well, it does, Vin, but you know, this is the end of the season and uh, he's also starting to think about next year and wants to get some, some rounds under his belt with these adjusted clubs. Payne Stewart now has about a 65 foot putt. Just a gentle right to left breaker will come up over this first ridge that uh, Baker Finch had to chip over. Three under par, Ben, and four shots back. I don't think he'll leave it short. That's got good pace on it. Get up. Get up. And he did leave it a little short. Not the, not the kind you're going to take it uh, right edge and hit it hard, though. No. Not from 65 feet. He's going to probably mark and let Ian Woosman putt down the hill, I would imagine. Yeah, Ian's going ahead and, and trying to get as much relief from his coin as he can. Of course, he's not allowed to put the ball back on the putting surface. He has to leave it on the fringe. That's the first cut of fringe, so he does get to clean his ball and, and mark it within a club length. He's right on the crest of a little knoll right there, and it's a very severe right-to-left break where he's standing. Difficult putt to read. Bobby's just got some speed going down that hill. Uh, I'm trying to figure out if he's going to just take a whack at this and try to get the lead with an eagle or just one of those eagle putts that goes about three or four inches by if he doesn't make it. I think that's the, that's what he's got to do here. It's, it's a difficult putt to make. He'll put 100 putts from there. He might make five or six. That's all. Not a, not a high percentage putt because it's just so hard to read. Great two iron he hit in here. No. Boy, was that a good putt. That sure was. Boy, oh. I thought he made it. He thought he made it. Tough break there. And we could really have a turn of events happening right here. Oh, sweet thing. That looked like it was going to catch the left edge there, Vin, and just kind of hobble right in. I know. What a time for an eagle. Boy, he has really impressed me on how good he hits his long irons. I mean, every one is just right at the flagstick, high and long. Well, now Finch, Baker Finch thinking of birdie because he's just about conceded the birdie to Woosnam. If he misses his birdie, Woosnam figures to catch him right here. This fin's a pretty no frills putt, about 10 feet, 11 feet, just slightly uphill, pretty level. But there's a lot of green in this green and it goes in different directions. It's right here on the peninsula on the, overlooking the ocean. And the green is all over the place on this hole. You remember yesterday, everybody was baffled by it. Baker Finch hit a good putt. It broke the opposite direction. Tough green to read. To keep the lead. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh no. Oh, what a putt. Oh. Gee. Oh. So he'll get his par. He stays at seven, and of course now for the first time in a long time, Baker Finch could be sharing the lead. After Daly will come Woosnam. I can't believe that putt didn't go in. That's the worst lip out we've seen all week. Oh, jeez. That? that was really a tough oh, one. Oh, look at this. 
Don't pay the ransom, honey. I've escaped. Now this, pain this, and then lose. This hole must be sponsored by Schick or something, because there's got some razor sharp edges on this thing. When's the last time Bobby has saw two hooks in the same hole? I don't know. Isn't that something? Maybe Jiffy Lou did an oil change on this green or something. Ooh. Well, this is going to get fun. This is just what we wanted, guys. We've Absolutely. got uh, coming into the 16th hole, pivotal hole. Two guys tied. This is four of four, and to get to four under par, three shots back. Oh, oh and that's another. unbelievable. If I was Ian, I'd just say, is this good, guys? Now here comes the big putt. Losing him for birdie after just missing the eagle, and he would catch Baker Finch. They would be at seven under with three holes to play. $400,000 first prize. This is like putting into a vortex here, Ben. You don't know what's going to happen. This is just a straightaway 14, 18 inch putt. Is there something wrong with that cup? <laughs> I think there's been something wrong with the last 12. <laughs> That's Baker Finch. Okay. Talking about his putting woes, not getting the ball in. And we have now got a tie, guys, and this is oh, going to get interesting. What a Ian Woosnam, four under for the day, seven under for the tournament. He has finally caught Baker Finch, who led him by one at the beginning of the day. Payne Stewart staying at three under. He's been that way since way back in the sixth hole. John Daly at one under. He's been that way since the tenth hole. Let's take a look at number 16, known as the turtle. Then it's only 330 yards. Ocean on the left. And you can see that fairway is real narrow up here where we've got a slide, a grass slide that goes straight down to the green that's tucked down onto the lava rocks down below. If a player is going to take a whack at it, you can see the fairway that slides down. There's only like four steps wide. Uh, there's a couple of guys right now that probably should take the chance. John Daly and maybe Payne Stewart will take a whack at it. The other two players, obviously, are going to lay up with a two or three iron and then hit a wedge down into the screen. And you can see the drop. That's a beautiful view of the drop right there. And you can see your golf ball hasn't got a lot of width to figure out right there. A reminder, too, to be sure to join us this February when we return to Hawaii for the United Airlines Hawaiian Open, a TBS exclusive live in prime time, February 6th through the 9th. Well, we are on the tee at the 16th. It's right by the end of the cliffs, a great restaurant, a great view of the ocean. And if you're standing on the tee, it's like, I guess, being atop a ski run and looking down at the bottom, it is breathtaking. The shot, although it's uh, much shorter, is, is a lot like the 18th tee at Pebble Beach. You've got ocean on the left and you've got uh, junk on the right. Um, one hole's 330 and the other hole's 530 yards. So Ian will probably just hit a three iron bobby off the tee. That's exactly what I think he's got. Just same play as he had yesterday. It's starting to rain a little bit here on the tee. He would like to hit at the same distance he did yesterday, knowing then how far his little pitch down that hill, which they can't tell the distance, will travel. This will be on the very left edge of the fairway. That's going to be fine. Yeah. Stewart taking a little waggle, so obviously he's not taking a driver trying to do something weird. And three irons going down the right center of the fairway, be fine. Hopefully it'll bounce off that hill and get back down onto the slope. Yeah, he's fine. Bobby's looks like he's about 10 feet inside the fairway. Now Baker Finch has a two iron. <laughs> Pretty calm out there, Bob. There's no, there's no wind or anything. No, it's real calm. And John Daly's just scratching his head, wondering what he's going to do here. He's got to try to whack it on. Very nice balance there. On the right side. Good swing. Kill it. Uh oh, that squeaky saying "kill it" that means big reds coming out. <laughs> 
Here he goes. Look out, Lighthouse. Fasten your seat belts. Oh, he killed it. It's going to be a little bit right. If the fairway weren't so soft, it would kick left very hard, but it's going to get up on the hill, I think. There's there it coming is. Still down rolling. The world's narrowest fairway. He just about hit. Well, had it been drier or had it been Oklahoma, she'd be right down by the flagstick. Meanwhile, the battle has indeed been joined. See truck our only business is trucks and has been for over 80 years a dedication to truck strengths and values to keep in mind because when you need to haul something tow something carry precious cargo find new trails or simply ride high and proud there's nothing quite as strong as a truck GMC truck the strength of experience Coming up on Sports Tonight, the L.A. Clippers are doing something new, winning. Magic Johnson gets some corporate backing and a familiar winner of the American League Cy Young Award. Join us on Sports Tonight at 11 o'clock Eastern Time. Next week on James Bond Wednesday. We've lost one of our nuclear submarines. An evil genius starts World War III. Oh my God. I intend to change the face of history. And a Soviet spy is Bond's only ally. You did save my life. We all make mistakes, Mr. Bond. Roger Moore is 007. James Bond Wednesday continues with The Spy Who Loved Me. Next Wednesday at 8.05 Eastern on TBS. Paul Revere here. Oh, hello, dear. No, everything's not okie-dokie. The British are coming. I'm not at the King's Arms pub. I'm using my Oki cellular phone. Yes, I can hear you as clear as a bell. If everyone had an Okie phone, they could hear their messages clearly. I wouldn't have to go riding around the countryside like this. And I just got the signal, hon. I got to go. Let's see. One if I land two. Yeah! Buy yourself some time. Okie cellular phones. The British are coming! Look, I'm just going to drive on up. The light bulb was flashing on the telephone. I got the last spot. It was like a dream. And the field is left sprawling in his wake. Yes, he's walking. <laughs> he's walking again. I just told myself, don't think of this as a major, think of it as another golf tournament. I told myself that all week. And that is enormous and perfect. When I got to 16th, I knew it was not just another tournament. Ah, the outriggers on the Kauai Lagoons. Meanwhile, the 16 green will give us a view of a small lighthouse. We'll also see Nawili Willy Harbor, and we'll really have our first glimpse off to the right later on of Kalapaki Bay, which is in front of the Weston Hotel here at Kauai Lagoon. But not very much interested in view right now is Ian Baker Finch, because his view from the top has suddenly forced him to share with Ian Woosnam. Bobby Clampett, do you have the yardage? Yeah, Gary, he's got 128 yards and a little bit of a right to left side hill line. Probably just a hard pitch. Yeah, it should be a perfect distance because you're about 60 feet below that fairway where you just hit it. It's a little right of the flag. Because the ocean's on the left. Beautiful golf shot right there. Payne Stewart, you can see him. He's about to place his ball. 126 yards. Probably just a little off. Take a, have to take a little off this pitching wedge right here. Woozy hasn't got the best angle, does he? He's got to come over more of that inlet of water. Terrible angle. He's behind the palm. He'll have to hit a big hook. With a sand wedge. With a sand wedge. 117 yards. Good looking shot here for Payne. Oh, right over the top of the flag stick. Of course, at this particular juncture, four shots back, man, he's trying to hold that. Here's a big shot now. It's a big shot, and he'll have to hit it right at the green, start the ball right at the green, and hook it around this big palm. You can see where he's looking there, Bobby. He was looking to the right of the ball because the palm tree's in his way. Trying to pick his line. He's looking up to see it now. Got to put a 20-yard hook on this sandwich to get it back to the hole, and he's hooked it about seven or eight. 
Oh, pin hook, spin hook. Pretty good shot. Pretty from good there. play right there. You bet it? it was. This screen is intimidating, and uh, thank goodness it's only 330 yards. I'd hate to hit to it with anything uh, more than a sand wedge. Okay, John Daly's got 11 yards to the front edge. <laughs> 11 more to the pin. That's 22. He's got a sand wedge. Right on the green. Beautiful. That's a tough shot there. He's standing. The ball is about four feet back of his right foot, trying to hit down in it, run it on up. But he took a shot at it. He's a kind of player that uh, we'll see a lot of that from him coming up in the next 10, 15, 20 years, just going for it. That was a gutsy play. Yeah, you called it. This is the narrowest fairway. I'm going to walk it off right here. Got to be three steps. It's seven yards wide. <laughs> it's the narrowest fairway on the tour, no question. Woozy will have a little uphill putt come up over a small ridge, pretty straight. The green again, much like the 15th green here at the 16th, very difficult for the players to read. Bobby, right now, this scenario, who do you see as the favorite with the holes coming up? These guys have got a couple long, longish birdie putts here. What do you see? Well, it's, it's hard to, to call at this point in time. You got Baker Finch, hasn't made a bogey yet in the tournament, playing very solidly, hit some good putts, hasn't gone in. You think that maybe he might just make one here coming down the stretch. He's due. On the other hand, you got the number one player in the world playing well. Things are kind of going his way a little bit right now. He has more momentum at the present time than Baker Finch. Also, he's been playing better in the past month or so than Baker Finch. His confidence level's got to be higher. Difficult call. You know, you, it's hard to go against the number one player in the world, though. I like the guy that's always coming from behind, charging with the momentum. And right now, I think it, it looks like that Ian Woosnam is the guy behind trying to push into the lead. And Baker Finch is just kind of hanging on, making pars, as you said. Woosnam was two shots behind Baker Finch at the end of the first hole. And it took him a while, but he finally caught Baker Finch at 15. Watch out. Oh, no. Look at that. Oh. 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 Just like we said, Ben. That is a beautiful putt right there. And what a time to slam a long one in. Oh, After my goodness. After a magnificent hooking sand wedge, that in itself was a gem. And then follow up with a birdie. That really has to deflate Baker Finch a wee bit as Ian Woosnam has taken the lead for the first time at eight under par. It's kind of kind of little chest of sour grin trying to come out of there, isn't it? <laughs> now, this is the first time that Baker Finch has had an opportunity to putt to try to tie for the lead. He's always been out in front, and now the whole mindset has changed. Let's see how he reacts here. Looks good, Gary. Oh. oh, boy, was that a good putt. Solid putt right there. It's just, Bobby, it looks like to me, he's in that, he's in that, that, that funk you get into when nothing is really going in and you don't know if it'll ever go in. It's close. I feel real frustrated for Ian Baker Finch at the present time because he's really putting well. He's hitting good shots and he hasn't made a birdie since the third hole. Kind of one of those guys that gets out in a marathon fast, you know, and, and he's running well, but he's he's kind of losing his strength. And there's a guy coming from behind, and he's going to pass you, and you can't do anything about it. And remember, Woosnam was two shots back as late as the 13th. And Daly still can't buy one. So Woosnam, two back after the first hole, two back after the 13th hole, and now leading as we'll be heading for the 17th hole, which is a par three. And that just about took Payne Stewart out of anything. Mm -hmm. There's always a miracle that can happen, but not, not now at five shots. Gary Payne's really got to be thinking of just securing third spot yes. right now. That was a big putt for Payne that John just missed. Yes, very. About 50,000 more. You know, 10 years ago, that was the average first place check on the PGA Tour, 50,000. I think they're going to have a rummage sale for putters at the end of this round. What do you think, Gary? 
they're going to take a long look, and most of them have got a couple of months to sit back and reflect on the year. And I every know one, one of these gentlemen, for sale. yeah, that's right. <laughs> every one of these gentlemen have just had a fantastic year, winning a major title, and now trying to win 400,000 first. The first swing, the first change, the first change of leadership. Ian Woosnam is now atop at eight under par. Now we're heading for a par three, the 17th hole called the Tiger. And Vin, it's a par three. It sets on a peninsula. You can see it right there. Jack Nicholas, it's the 17th hole, and he put 17 palm trees around it. But right now we've got a two-man race. Ian Woosnam, now he's gonna start just trying to get the ball in the green. If he can get the ball in the last two greens, he's gotta make Ian Baker Finch make a birdie one of these last two, and that's very difficult when you're talking about $400,000. So uh, it's between these two guys, and Ian Wilson's gonna be up first. He's gotta plant this ball on the green. Pin today is in the back right. Pretty narrow back there. You know, we mentioned that at one stage at Augusta that Ian Woosnam had those four, six consecutive birdies to go on to win. He's had three consecutive birdies on the backside, and again, now he's fallen right into that. And when you start making the sand wedge around a palm tree and knocking in a 40-foot putt, uh, you've got to believe that he feels now that he's in control. I, th I think if you went back and talked to Ian right now, he'd say the ninth hole is the key. Mm -hmm. I, I went in the back nine with only a two-shot deficit, not a three, and it kind of got him going. He wasn't doing much. And now all of a sudden, boom, he's out in front. He's controlling his destiny now, not the other way around. So Woosnam finishing up with birdies, and remember, Baker Finch began the day with birdies. Like we talked about earlier, I'd rather have him at the end than the front. A lot of times, Vin, you'll, you'll get off to a good start and you'll start throwing them in. You're going, huh, mine, I've won. You know, give me the prize. And all of a sudden, you made everything early. Now nothing will go in and somebody else catches up. Let me ask you this about playing now in the rain again. What is the biggest thing about the rain? What does it do? Does it bother the grip the most, your concentration the most, or does it bother you at all? The rain and warm weather is fine. Rain and cold is bad because he'd have a jacket on, he'd be cold, you try to keep everything dry. Now we got to worry about is handing your caddy the umbrella once you get the clear. You don't have to take off your rain jacket. You have to do all that stuff. You can really concentrate on what you're doing. It's This is not going to bother them at all. We played last week, and we had to remove mittens, mm -hmm. snow caps. Uh, we were hitting rain gear. We had to take all that stuff off. That's when it gets kind of cumbersome. Big shot right here. Huge shot. Bobby, what's he got? 176 yards. My guess, it's a hard 7 iron probably between seven and six, but I think the hard seven's the better play with the pin being in the back. Sounds a little fat, is it? Uh, it should be, it's gonna be on the green a little left of the hole. Fat shot past the hole, that's definitely not fat. Good golf shot right there. You know, one thing, Gary, that's always noticeable about Ian Woosnam's shot making is his bottom of his swing is always in front of the ball. Right. You rarely ever see him hit a shot fat. He's a kind of player Bobby also when he's, when he's swinging the golf club he straightens his right side up most of the people that hit it fat will kind of curve in the right side putting their head behind the ball and wherever your head is in the golf swing that's where the bottom of your swing is and and uh, he is just uh, he is very impressive now pain my guess would be hitting a six iron here good thing about Baker Finch going third here or fourth is he's going to have a very good idea of what to hit and how hard to hit it. Okay, Payne Stewart with a seven iron. Like you said yesterday, Gary, he's very long with the short irons. This is a long seven iron, though. There's a little breeze into you. Greens are soft. 176 yards. you got to carry it all the way to the hole. Especially when it's raining. Yeah, it's going to be considerably left of the hole, but on the green. Pin high. <laughs> He doesn't care about 400,000 first, that duck right there, Ben. That beautiful swan. Oh. I don't even have to ask Baker Finch what he's got. He's got to be a six iron. Got to be a six, six iron for him. And just about the right distance, too, isn't it, Bobby? I would say it's just perfect. Just a driving range six iron for him. And he's really been hitting some great iron shots today. But nothing's been more important for him than this shot right here. It's high, 
It's drifting a little right. I don't know if it's long enough. Just mm. over the bunker, Bob. Yes, me. So actually, Ian Woosnam has got the ball the closest so far of any of the players. John Daly, seven iron, perfect seven iron for John. He's starting to make the adjustment now with the weaker clubs. Ordinarily, this would be an eight iron for John. This one's going right. Not a good shot for John. He'll be unhappy with this one. I want to assume it's in the bunker, Bobby. Yeah, it's in the bunker. I just hope it didn't bury. So Ian Woosnam, who is now the leader at eight under par, also on the green at 17, with the long 18th yet ahead to be played. It all started in 1916, when 82 people got together to form the PGA and promote interest in the game of golf. Now, 75 years later, our 20,000 members will open America's golf shops every morning, sell over 20 million clubs, donate thousands more to underprivileged children, and give over 2 million lessons. But of all these achievements, we're proudest to say it's still just a game. It happens every morning in London, Paris, and Madrid. Just as the city starts to stir. In Munich, Manchester, Zurich, and Brussels, just as the business day begins. Glasgow, Stockholm, Frankfurt, and Milan. As the new day arrives, so do we. American Airlines, with more non-stops to more of Europe than any other airline. Over 200 flights a week to 11 European cities in nine different countries. So fly the one airline with more non-stops to more of Europe than anyone. American Airlines. Something special to Europe. When what you eat and drink upsets your stomach, you want a medicine that works directly on your stomach itself. Pepto-Bismol. As it coats, Pepto delivers powerful medicine directly to your stomach, right where you hurt. It's powerful relief. Pepto-Bismol. It's real medicine for your stomach. We're at the par 317th. Ian Woosnam, leading by one shot, has put more pressure on Ian Baker Finch, from whom he took the lead at 16. Just a few moments ago, John Daly, whose tee shot caught the bunker to the front of the green, hit out nicely and certainly has a makeable putt to salvage par. He's at one under par. Payne Stewart. All he's watching right now is John Daly. It's just, <laughs> that's it. Forget it. Just go home. Have a nice rest for a month. <laughs> he knows it doesn't matter, does no, it? Doesn't no, it's matter. been a big week for him. He celebrated his wedding anniversary on Sunday. His daughter, Chelsea, celebrated her sixth birthday today. And the worst that can happen is you make $200,000. That'll do me just fine, just Vinny. There you go. So he's still at three under. <laughs> Two shot lead on Daly. That's all you could do to just laugh at it. You're not going to get me game. You're not going to get me. You hear me game? You got no chance to get me. Well, you know, he's won over five million dollars in his career. He is sixth on the all time money list. And he's only 34 now. This 34. is for a tie. Get a good line here down that bunker. Gary, this putt that Ian has, it's gonna it's a double breaker again. We'll start breaking right at the beginning and then come pretty strongly from right to left as it nears the hole and the grain right to left. Double breakers when you're trying to tie a guy are no fun. No. Probably about 18 feet. He is due though. Boy, he's hit some good putts lately and he just will not go. What an opportune time this would be. Another 737 coming yep. in. He's backing away. It seems like every time a plane has come over, it's been when Baker Finch is going to putt. I think they know that. I think they're timing their approach just for that. 
where the lagoon is beautiful back there. And Oof. in the background, the wedding chapel. Quite a romantic place. But no romance here. Lucy doesn't seem too concerned about much right now. To get in a tie with Ian Woosnam. Comes back, it's just not, they're just dodging. And Ian's kind of sitting there, Woosnam, saying, well, you know, he's been doing this for 14 holes, it's probably not gonna change, and I'm not gonna get too worried about it. But if a guy is, every putt looks like it's going in and is going in, you start to get a little jumpy. Well, you look at your scorecard and he has been minus seven since the third hole, which was his third birdie in a row. And he just stayed there. Woosnam started at three under, made the turn at five under, had a bogey to drop two shots back at 13, and then came right back, birdie, birdie, birdie. Remember, he had four straight birdies in Augusta to help win the green jacket. And this could surely do it right here to get to nine under. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I mean, you go. poured it right in the middle, and there it is. So four straight birdies. When he did it at Augusta, he did it on the back nine in the third round, and he shot 67. And for some reason, we talked about that at the very start of the day, and it certainly jumped up again. For par, and a sand save for John Daly. However, two shots a difference now. Daly is two behind Stewart, and Baker Finch finds himself two behind Woosner. I mean, he never relinquished the lead, and all of a sudden now he's coming to the end, and he hasn't made a bogey, he hasn't done anything wrong, Not and all of a sudden now he's two shots back. What Not happened? So, Ian Baker Finch, minding his own business, has just stayed at seven under, and Ian Woosnam is six under for the round, nine under for the two-day tournament, and a two-shot lead going to the final hole, the 18th hole, appropriately enough, a reminder of the designer of PLA Golf Club, Jack Nicholas, the Golden Bear. Beautiful hole it is, man. You got that lagoon all on the right-hand side, palm trees dotting the way, and then there's a narrow peninsula jetting out to form a green. Three bunkers around it, a bunch of palm trees to backdrop it, a gorgeous golf hole. Pin placement today is back in the left-hand side, and this is the narrow portion of the green, and right behind that pin, Vin, is only about eight feet before it goes straight down into the lagoon. Two-shot lead, looking at a 431-yard par four. Got those two white tents out there. He'll try to split them with his driver, and Bobby Clampett is down there. That's exactly right, Gary. He said a little bit right of where he wanted to, but it's gonna be fine. Boy, he is not flinching, is he, Bobby? Absolutely not. He's really got a lot of momentum. Four consecutive birdies. We were talking about earlier the patience that's got to come in, and, and he, he was very patient. He didn't try to force things to happen. He let the putter do the work. Now he's got it rolling. In case if any of you want to know, it's 296 yards to that swan out there. Get out there, Oral! <laughs> Oral Roberts, that means that ball was cut cleanly on the heel. <laughs> that Payne's trying to get in, and he's going to do it. It's ugly, but he's going to do it. That's a good looking kind of ugly, though. Isn't, isn't it, Joe? Right in the middle of the fairway? Yeah. And only 260 yards. That's too bad. He doesn't do much ugly, I'll tell you. Baker Finch now, a little... Somebody caught his eye on the right-hand side. And he's got to be semi-shell-socked. Don't you think, Bobby, just all of a sudden, boom, he's in the lead, and all of a sudden, now two holes later, he's two shots back. I think you're right, Gary. You know, it's just been a tremendous charge that Woosnam has put on, on Baker Finch right here. And Baker Finch is hitting good shots, but just nothing quite happening. This one, right. same line as Stewart. But took a bad hop. It's going to be in the left rough. That's difficult from there now because you have to control the distance on the second shot with the pin and a little narrow peninsula and water all over the place. Here we go. One last time. 
will be a point of critical mass here in about one second. Right there. Uh -oh. It's going right. Hang, Bo, hang. Look out, it's Swan. It's got a duck, maybe. Look out, Swan. Mm. Duck, duck. Bobby, we can't. Is that it right there? In the fairway? Huh. It backed up. <laughs> he flew at 290 and it backed up, Ben. Well, it would appear as if the story has been written with Ian Woosnam enjoying a two-shot lead. Come and get it, boys! Marshal Rooster Jay Cogburn always gets his man. But a woman is a different thing altogether. Rooster Cogburn, 1035 Eastern, Sunday morning on TBS. At GMC Truck, we've seen days like this for over eight years. And have learned the value of a van that gives you the most room in its class. The added safety of four-wheel anti-lock brakes. The traction of full-time all-wheel drive. And the feeling of security that can only come from a van that's built as strong as a truck. Safari from GMC Truck. More proof of the strength of experience. We're picking up an unidentified ship, sir. Yeah? I hear music. People laughing. Sounds like a... Tango. Nah. Merengue. Norwegian Cruise Line. Mambo. Special fares are now available. I like that. Call your travel agent today. Wow. Let's get permission to come aboard, sir. Oh, he looked scarier 25 years ago. Did I? You looked scared. I don't know. I thought I hit it well for an innocent groom. You were innocent for the 60s. Any regrets? None. You? Just one. What? That I waited 25 years to give you this. The 25th anniversary diamond, a brilliant celebration of the loving marriage. I've got goosebumps. Well, you've given me goosebumps for 25 years. <laughs> My miss hit shots are still just going out and fading. I'm hitting more fairways, and again, that's helped me in that stat of total driving to hit more fairways and to increase my distance. And uh, it's, it, it's all the proof I need that this is the driver for me. The island of Kauai, and maybe indeed it was, home for the elusive Menahunis. When they look down in Waimea Canyon and find some aqueducts, they think the we people actually constructed them. And back in about the 1860s, there were 45 people who claimed they came from Menahuni background. But we should have kept that in mind when this began. Who then would feel more at home on this garden island than an offspring of the Menahuni by way of Wales and the leprechauns, Ian Woosnam? That's as good as I've ever heard right there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he was not reading that. That was off the top of his head. Off That's the impressive. top of his Let's go down to Ian Baker Finch, who could care less about Menahunis and leprechauns. Now, Bobby Clampett, to me, the story is right here. Uh, he's, the pin is back left. Water in front, water right behind. He's got a flyer lie. Can he shoot at the flag? 195 yards, and it's not a good lie at all. It's not a flyer lie. It's one of those kind of lies that's going to come out thud. And it's just a question of, can he get it there far enough? And I don't think he can with the club that he's got, but what's he got to do? Yeah, he's got he's to go, go for it. This is have to be real lucky to get this ball close. This is the hardest swing you'll ever see Ian Baker Finch make. It's not going to get there. That looks wet. Just really no chance from there. Game, set, match mm -hmm. right there. You know, I had a little thing I dug out of a book. Sir Walter Simpson in 1887 wrote, Golf has some drawbacks. It's possible by too much of it to destroy the mind. A man with a Roman nose and a high forehead may play away his profile oh, and I think that's what's that's, happened here he has played away his profile into the water in front Payne's got 187 yards hard six iron I believe it's coming up short that's right on the edge barely got there now Ian Baker Finch had to take that shot that's at it he, there was just no way out he was going to get second place regardless and here's Woozy, 167 yards to the pin. He'll Let's just try to keep this below the hole, center of the green, no frills. Hook on it. That's oh, a good-looking shot. Looks like it's going to be plenty long. 
Oh, it mm. just float right out of that. That is impressive. That is very impressive. Walking in like a winner. He's trying to birdie them all coming in, isn't he? Why not? Just all of them. Why not go for five straight? John Daly, probably with uh, eight iron, maybe nine iron, Bobby. It's a nine iron, 146 yards drawn. Just a little left of the hole, but a good looking shot. A nine iron in this 431 yard finishing hole. So it is a big day for Wales, a big day for the little man, Ian Woosnam, who's got it locked. By Tuesday night, Lex Luger, Rick Steiner, for the World Heavyweight Championship. Clash of the Champions, live Tuesday night at 8.05 Eastern, exclusively on TBS. At GMC Truck, we've seen days like this for over eight years. And have learned the value of a van that gives you the most room in its class. The added safety of four-wheel anti-lock brakes. The traction of full-time all-wheel drive. And the feeling of security that can only come from a van that's built as strong as a truck. Safari. Relationships in Flo's family barely altered over the next few weeks. But one day, there was a change. Flint had become happy once more. Fifi may have guessed that Flint's joy was because the infant had died. <laughs> Flo accepted her five-year-old son as the baby of the family once more. Flint was in seventh heaven. half years passed peacefully. The forest offered plenty of food and the streams provided clean drinking water. Fifi heard Flint crying. He was over eight years old and still a baby. Yet his cries were now well founded. Flo was dead. Flint was distraught as he inspected his mother's body. Brushed the flies off her. Flo 
was 53 years old, her heart had failed. Others arrived slowly as if to share in Flint's grief. above the stream. Soon the whole family gathered. Friends began to drift away. But Flint did not move from his nest. Even when Fifi and his big brothers left, he refused to follow. Flint stayed near his mother's body for three weeks. He died of grief. Now from the Discovery Video Library comes People of the Forest. Experience a family saga like no other recorded in motion picture history. 20 years in the making. Images of life, love, and rivalry. Set against three generations of a chimpanzee tribe deep in the forests of Africa. Meet the People of the Forest. Flo, the gentle and wise matriarch. The fierce elders protecting the tribe's territory and Flo's loving children. All remarkably human in every way. A story for all generations, one that your whole family will enjoy. Based on research by Jane Goodall, narrated by distinguished actor Donald Sutherland. People of the Forest, available on VHS video for only $24.95. Call 1-800-722-5700 with your credit card ready. People of the Forest will continue on the Discovery Channel. Sponsored in part by Isuzu. If you're a comparison shopper, come to the Isuzu Invitational. At $2,300 off, you might discover that you're a real trooper. Or maybe you'll discover you're a stylish person. And even if you're an impulse buyer, you'll find yourself in for a real pickup. So if you're thinking about a change, be a trooper and hurry to the Isuzu Invitational to compare and save on Isuzu cars and trucks. Or really just save, because with Isuzu, there's no comparison. That's Mommy's little sweetheart. there's a new stain master carpet that handles foot traffic like never before new stain master extra life only from dupont sheltered in the harbor, and some would rather sail into life with the unmistakable scent of Old Spice. Clean, true, and classic. Old Spice, one of the legends of the sea. I watched what I ate, worked out on my easy glider, and lost 75 pounds. Some say it's the number one fitness exercise. Just 20 minutes every other day firms all major muscle groups. It's a tremendous workout. Dual resistance allows you to adjust tension for both legs and upper body. The bikes only work on certain parts of your body. Um, easy glider, warts on all over. 
And this handsome unit folds down quickly for easy storage. Shape up and slim down with Easy Glider. A nuclear accident kept secret. A world power melts down. And for the first time, Soviet insiders speak freely. Exclusive interviews reveal how Gorbachev rose to power before the Kremlin cracked down. The Second Russian Revolution, a special series premiering Sunday, September 22nd at 9 Eastern, only on the Discovery Channel. Is there a car dealer in Houston who would take back a used car after you had driven it a month? Yes, there is. Buy a quality used car truck from Mack Hike Ford and get Mack Hikes exclusive. If you change your mind, guarantee. If you change your mind in 30 days or 3,000 miles, we'll take it back. And you can apply the full purchase price on any other car or truck that Mack Hike sells. With a guarantee like this, why would you buy a used car anywhere else? You just can't beat that great Mack Hike feeling. TNT's got a contest to see how tough you really are. Enter to win the NFL on TNT Tough Stuff Sweepstakes. You and a friend could spend two days at an NFL training camp, then five days relaxing in the Caribbean. Bask in the glory of the NFL, then bask in the glow of the Caribbean. Watch TNT for details and catch the NFL on TNT Sunday nights this fall. Register to win at Maurice Levitt Jewelry, 5878 Westheimer at Fountain View, next to Houston's Restaurant. All of the Forest now continues on the Discovery Channel. Perhaps Fifi daydreams of those long lost years. was a decade ago. Since then, life has been kinder to Fifi, who now has three children. Fabian learned to manage with his paralyzed arm. He supported Fagan's quest to become the dominant male. Fagan is finally getting the respect he always seemed to want. Fanny will probably be like her mother and grandmother, tolerant and kind. Fifi's eldest son, Freud, worships the big males just as Fagan had done. His idol is his Uncle Fagan. Frodo, her other son, aged five, might well be Flint. He not only looks like him, but in many ways also behaves in the same fashion. The baboons still share the forest. They make Fanny nervous. But her brother, Frodo, enjoys stoning them.
Frodo relishes teasing the baboons. Little Fanny eggs him on. Then she hides in case a fight starts up. But it's only a game. Frodo likes the baboons. They're his friends. Fifi's world has become serene. The people of the forest are content. This might be paradise. Then, strange things start happening in the forest. An odd mist drifts through the canopy of leaves. There are strange sounds, unheard before. The people of the forest do not know it. But the time of flames is drawing near. right for me. The luxury sedans of Europe and Japan seem to fit my lifestyle better. I never even considered owning a Cadillac. The 1992 Cadillac Seville is here, and there's never been a car like it. The Mountain Magic of the Appalachians, Tuesday on America Coast to Coast. Now, Glade Country Pottery Air Fresheners have fresh new designs. Put out the pottery. 